This is the ultimate guide to mid journey. Here we will go through everything you need to know to get started, the pricing plans, how to get started, how to use basic and advanced prompts, copyrights and much more. My name is Kent, I'm a graphic designer and this is Dia Graphics. Midjourney is a text to image generator that has gained a lot of popularity since it was released in July 2022. So let's jump straight into how to get started using Midjourney. So here we are on midjourney.com and the first thing you'll see when you open up the website is this confusing front page right here that will make you think that you're in the wrong place. Don't worry, you're in the right place. So to start using Midjourney, you simply need to click this button right here that says sign in. So after clicking the sign in button, you'll be redirected to discord.com. And this might be a little bit confusing at first, but this is actually because Midjourney is run on a Discord server and not on a website like the other AI tools. So if you don't have a Discord account, you need to register right here to create a Discord account. I already have one, so I will simply log in. After logging in, you'll get this pop-up right here and simply just click authorize. So now we are logged into our Midjourney account, but we need to find the Discord server to start generating our images. So click this link right here that says join the Discord to start creating. Then you'll get this pop up right here and you can simply click the blue button to accept the invitation to Midjourney. Then confirm you're human by selecting the sea otters or whatever. So here we are inside our Discord and make sure you have selected the Midjourney server. So if you don't know how to use Discord, don't worry, you don't need to. The only thing you need to know inside here is that you need to go to these rooms right here that says newbies. So simply click on one of these newbies rooms and from here we can start creating. So if you go inside the feed, you can scroll up and down to see what people have made and also what the Midjourney bot is making. So everything that everyone in this room creates will be dropped into the same feed right here. This means that it can be a little bit tricky to find your own prompt because the room gets flooded all the time with new images. So before we start generating images, I suggest you go to the bottom of the room. So now click this box down in the bottom, type in a dash and then type imagine. Then press the spacebar and now we are ready to enter our prompt. So here I've typed in a very basic and generic prompt and let's see what Midjourney comes up with. So as you can see right here, because I just created this account for the sake of this tutorial, I need to accept the terms of service before I can use Midjourney. So simply click on this accept TOS and sometimes you'll get this error message, but it's usually because you didn't accept the terms of service quick enough. So simply type in another prompt, find the dialog box with the terms of service again and quickly click accept TOS. That's what I did right here and now the terms of service is accepted. So now once again, go to the prompting box, type in a dash plus imagine, then press the spacebar and once again, let's type in a guy in a fantasy city and click enter. Now let's scroll up to find our prompt. And as you can see, our prompt is highlighted in yellow. This makes it easier to find when you're scrolling up. When the images are done generating, as you see right here, they will return to the bottom. So now simply go to the bottom once again. So here are the images. Midjourney creates four images. And to be honest, they look really cool. So before we can use the image, we have to choose one and upscale it. So click away from this. And as you can see in the bottom of the images, we have view one to four and V1 to four. And these buttons actually means upscale image number one, which is this one. So it's one, two, three, four. And if I like image number two, I can choose to upscale image number two to get a full version of image number two. Or I can choose variation two to get a new variation of image number two. So if I like image number two and I want to use it, I need to click U2. Then I need to scroll down to find the upscaling. And here is something highlighted in yellow and the upscaling can take a little while. So I will skip forward. So here we have our finished upscaled image and we can simply click it and click download if we want to. So this is the most basic prompt we can do. And by the way, this Pikachu right here is awesome. 
shout out to this developed tech boss for creating this image. So now let's do some more advanced prompts to get some more control over the image. And you do advanced prompts by adding keywords to your sentences. But there's a lot of keywords and you will not be able to remember them all. So instead of just going through a list with all these keywords, I recommend using this mid journey prompt tool right here. So go to prompt.noonshot.com. There'll be a link down in the description as well. Now start typing in the main idea as it says right here. And our main idea is a guy in a fantasy city. So now I can go down to these options right here and add a specific lighting, a specific camera, depth of field, quality, and really most of the things you'll ever need. So let's go to lighting. And here we can select a specific kind of lighting for our image. So let's scroll down a little bit. And I think I'll select this moonlight right here. And this slider right here is how much of a priority the moonlight is. So do you want a lot of moonlight or a little bit of moonlight? I'll just keep it at one. Now I'll choose a style. So let's scroll down a little bit. I think this Caribbean style looks cool. So choose the style and click continue. And for quality, I suggest you always choose 2x. This will give your image a higher resolution. Also, you can choose size, go to aspect ratio. And if you want an image that is fitted more for a screen instead of a square, you need to choose 3 by 2. And this is because version 4 at this point does not support 16 by 9. I think they'll update this prompt helper in the near future. Version 4 is just released and this prompt helper is on version 3. But just remember if you want to fit it to a screen, you need to choose 3 by 2 for now. And now we have the full prompt right here with all the keywords added to it. So now select copy prompt, go back to the discord server. Scroll to the bottom, go to this box right here and add in the prompt by clicking Ctrl V. Then click enter. And now it starts creating the image. And here we have the images with our new prompt. And this image right here turned out really good I think. So tap out of this and select U1 because we want an upscale of image number 1. Then find the new input right here and wait for our job to start. This once again will take a while, so I will fast forward. So here we have our new upscaled image. I think it turned out really well. So this is advanced prompting, but you can actually upload images as well and use them in your prompt. So to do this, click this plus button right here, upload a file, find the file on your computer and click open. And here I have a photo of two puppies. Now simply click enter to upload the photo to the server. Scroll down to find it again. And now to use the photo, simply click dash imagine spacebar. Then click and drag the photo down to the prompt. Then click the spacebar and add whatever you want to your photo. I will add in Picasso style. Click enter and see what happens. Let's scroll down to find it, right here. Now it's done, let's go down and find it. So now we have the two puppies in a Picasso style right here. And I don't think these photos turned out very well, but you can play around with your own photos and see what you can come up with. So now let's take a look at the subscription plans. And if we go down a little bit, we can see here that the free trial is giving us 0.4 hours of fast GPU time. This equals to 25 minutes and each photo is one minute. So in the free trial, you'll get to generate 25 photos and not 25 a day or a month, it's for the lifetime. So use your 25 free attempts wisely. But if you run out of your free photos, you can upgrade to a paid plan and it's really affordable. So for some reason, they choose to hide the prices down in the bottom. So let's scroll down here. And as you can see, the basic plan is just $8 a month. And if you're just doing this as a hobby, the basic plan should be more than enough. So you can choose the basic plan, the standard plan and the pro plan. So let's scroll up again to see what's in the plans. And as you can see right here, the basic plan will give you 3.3 hours a month. And that's about 200 images a month. And then you can get 15 hours or 30 hours as well. And now you might ask, is it legal to use the photos that you generated? And to answer that question, we need to go down to the bottom right here, where it says usage rights. 
and for the free trial we will have to apply by the Creative Commons rules. So let's click this link and here we can see what we can and can't do. So we are free to copy and redistribute the material in any medium or format and we can remix, transform and build upon the material. But as you can see right here, the free trial is for non-commercial usage only. This basically means that if you're on the free trial, you cannot legally use your images to earn money. So now let's go back to the subscription plan. And as you can see for the paid plans, these go under the general commercial terms. And we can find these down here. So let's scroll down a little bit to see the requirements. And here we have the copyright and trademarks. So here it says that if you are a paid member, you own all the assets you create with the services. This means that if you are using the paid plan, you can legally use the images to earn money. This means anything from creating a flyer for a customer or selling the photos directly in an image bank like Adobe Stock. This means that the $8 that the cheapest paid plan costs can be earned back pretty quickly if you are good at selling photos. So now if you ever need to find your images again after generating them, you simply go back to midjourney.com, sign in to your account and all your images will be saved right here on your account. I hope you are having an amazing day. If you found this guide useful, please consider giving it a like and if you have any tips you want to share with other people, feel free to post them down in the comments below.